Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. I hope you are all doing very well today. It's a lovely Saturday. I can turn off the air conditioning and open the windows. It's not too hot. And I walked to breakfast, had breakfast, walked back. So it has been a lovely day so far. So I hope you are having a great Saturday as well. Um, a couple of housekeeping things and then we'll get into the, the meat of the video. But first I just wanted to do a reminder. A while ago I talked to you guys about The Child Finder by Renee Denfield. I had read it before it came out. Well it came out this week and lo and behold she was in my town last night so last night I got to go and meet Renee Denfield. Look at how beautiful this cover is. Beautiful. And she is wonderful and great. And I'm actually going to try to do a whole video about this book and a review um, and do some snippets of uh, what went on last night. So I won't go into it too much. But just as a reminder, this is about Naomi. Naomi is a woman who is hired to find children who have been lost. And at the beginning of the book, she's contacted by a family whose daughter has been missing for three years. Um, it's the story of her search for that. So it's sort of like a thriller in that sense as she searches for this mis missing little girl. It also deals um, with, there's a second storyline about a girl who um, wakes up one morning somewhere where she hasn't been and she believes herself to be the fairy tale character, the snow child, who was created by snow and brought to life for the man that she's living with. And it's kind of those two stories running in tandem. You learn about Naomi. She's had a very difficult past as well. And it is fantastic. And I will review it in more detail in another video. But I did want to remind you that it is now out. It came out on Tuesday. I met Renee. She'll be at Elliott Books in Seattle, I believe, tomorrow night. And um, she signed my book. And she also signed, and I know I've talked about this a lot, the Enchanted. She signed my copy of The Enchanted, which is one of my favorite books of all time. So just a reminder that it is out there. I will um, make sure and link both those titles down below for you. Uh, second piece of, piece of housekeeping. I have started a Goodreads group for Ink and Paper blog. Um, I am going to start putting some topics up there for conversations after I do my videos and try to get some uh, discussions going. I'm planning something for 2018. It's a little too early for me to tell you about it, but I think a lot of what I'm going to do on that project will actually be on Goodreads. So I definitely want you guys to go and sign up if you are on Goodreads so you we can keep updated and we can talk there as well. And you can also talk with other people about books and all that kind of stuff. Um, I will link the Goodreads group down below also. So if you want to join it, go ahead and do that. Um, it's just getting started. So it's very bare bones right now, but I hope you guys will join and we can have some great conversations over there as well. And what was the third thing that I wanted? There was a third thing and it's totally slipping my mind. So let's get into it. What is the crux of this video going to be? I am calling this my backlist book haul. So I went to my local used bookstore. There's one on my way home from work. Um, recycled books on the Alameda in San Jose. And if you are local, I highly recommend going there. And sometimes when you know you're having one of those days and you just need to go to a quiet space and look at books to feel better, I go there and do a little bit of shopping. So I've picked up a couple of books there and I have one book that I actually had to get elsewhere but I wanted to tell you about and they're all backlist books. So it's a backlist book haul uh, for you guys to sort of take a look at and hopefully add all of these to your TBR. The first book is going to be the one book I didn't get at the used bookstore, and that's because I searched for this book everywhere and could not find it. And that is The Observations by Jane Harris. Now, Simon over at Savage Reads was talking about the fact that he just re read, read Jane Harris's new novel that is coming out, Sugar something, I'm totally blanking on the name. And then he's also read Gillespie and I and The Observationists. And I asked him if it's good to start at the beginning because I haven't read any Jane Harris and he said it is. And then so I had to wind up going and ordering this because I could not get it anywhere. And I went to like six or seven used bookstores, three or four independent bookstores, so I finally had to order it. So this book says that Scotland, 1863, Bessie Buckley is a wide-eyed, sharp-tongued, and not-so-innocent 15-year-old Irish girl living in Glasgow. In an attempt to escape the troubles of her past, she takes a job as a maid in a once grand country house outside Edinburgh, working for the beautiful Arabelle, the Mrs. Asked by the Mrs. to keep a journal of her utmost intimate thoughts, Bessie soon makes a troubling discovery that all is not as it seems with her employer or the other maids in the house. And as mutual suspicion deepens, Bessie realizes 
that she's fled one difficult past to arrive in an even more disturbing present. How have I not read this book? Does that not sound fantastic? So that's The Observations by Jane Harris. I had a hard time finding it. Maybe you guys can find it in your used bookstores or your library, um, but it has been out for some time, so it shouldn't be too hard to get, but it was hard to get. So look for it and tell me if you're able to find it or if you've read it, I'd love to know about it. Now, the other books that I got are all from my independent book, uh, sorry, my used bookstore. And um, I'm super excited about all of them. And this is Blonde Roots by Bernardine Evaristo. And the reason I got this one was because this won the Orange Prizes Youth Panel Award. Now, the Orange Prize is the old name for the Bailey's Prize, which is the old name for the Woman's Prize for Fiction now, um, now that they're not going to have a single sponsor. And I didn't know that they even had a Youth Fiction Award. So when I saw this, and I'll tell you right now, it was on the pile for $1.99. I was like, why, why don't I know about this and why haven't I bought this book before? Um, this is a book where it flips history and asks the question, what if Africans enslaved Europe? I think that is probably all I needed to know. Fascinating premise, fascinating idea. Um, it won a prize, so it has to have some merit. I think it's um, very interesting. I think if I remember correctly, it's, let me see here. Yeah, so it's about, it's from the eyes of Doris, who is an English woman who was kidnapped into slavery. I, it's going to be fascinating. And Bernadette Invisto is one of eight siblings born to an English mother and a Nigerian father. So I automatically identify with anybody that has more than seven siblings like I do. So I'm really excited for this. That's Blonde Roots by Bernadine Evaristo. And what a premise. What a premise. Kind of goes along those lines like what if Germany had won World War II or something like that, how the world would be different. So there you go. The next book is actually kind of funny that I bought it in a weird way, and that is Boy Snowbird by Helen Noemi. Now, I will tell you right now, this was the last Helen Noemi book that I didn't own. It is also one of all of Noemi, Helen Noemi's books that I haven't read. I have not read any of her books, but I have bought all of her books. I don't know why I have not read Helen Noemi. I think I would love her. Now, Snowbird, I'm sorry, Boy Snowbird, um, got some really, really amazing reviews when it came out years ago. And I think I actually bought it and then may have called it because I didn't read it. That's me. I don't know. Weird. But this says this is, it's the winter of 1953. Boy Novak arrives by chance in a small town in Massachusetts, looking, she believes, for beauty. The opposite of the life she's left behind in New York. She marries Arturo Whitman, a local widower, and becomes stepmother to his winesome daughter, Snow. A wicked stepmother is a creature boy never imagined she would become, but elements of the fairy tale of aesthetic obsessions begin to play themselves out when the birth of boy's daughter, Bird, who is dark skin, exposes the white men's as light-skinned African Americans passing for white. Individually and together, boy, snow, and bird confront the tyranny of the mirror to ask how much power surfaces really hold. So that sounds so good. Um, the fact that like one the female characters are boy, snow, and bird is is amazing. Um, I don't know why I haven't read this. That I checked so many boxes. Sounds fantastic. I have now all of her books. Have you guys read Helen Noemi? Why have I not read her? Talk to me about her below if you haven't read her. If you have read her, tell me why we shouldn't be reading her and we should be reading her now. I think it's true. Okay, last no penultimately, is The Manual of Cl for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin, Selected Stories. Now, uh, Literary Disco, which is a podcast I listened to, did a whole episode on a couple of the short stories in this collection, and I will link that if I can find it below so you guys can take a listen. Um, L Lydia Davis is one of those women who is a writer's writer, and I think a lot of writers knew about her and really championed her, but she never really became fa famous until she passed away, and this total collection of her uh, short stories came out. I have flipped through this book, and she is a fantastic writer. She has a very clean style. She's very straightforward. Her imagery is very short, precise, 
but very vivid. So I really liked that about what I was picking up. I think the, I've read the story or parts of the story of a manual for cleaning women, and it is literally a woman telling people how to be a cleaning woman, but also intersecting sort of the do's and don'ts of the job in there. Does that make sense? Um, which was fascinating. Literary Disco does a really, really great episode on this. So I will link them. I highly recommend you listen to it. And that is A Manual for Cleaning Women by Lucia Berlin. I got this whole short story collection for $5 at the used bookstore. So, um, and that's not even my best deal because you're about to see the best deal that I got. The other day I was there, so I told you I'm working on a project for 2018 and it involves some books that are on the backlist. So I was searching for a book and of course it wasn't there, so I had to shop. I couldn't not buy something. And I ran across this, and this is the Rolled Doll Omnibus, um, Perfect Bedtime Stories for Sleepless Nights. And it says on the back, a diabolically irresistible collection of 28 of Roald Dahl's best stories. Shiver to classics like The Man from the South, Taste, Royal Jelly, and The Great Switch Switcheroo, and discover hard-to-find gems like Poison, The Wish, and Nuck. And I have heard that his adult fiction and his adult short stories is very dark. He's not all Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, James and the Giant Peach. So I thought, you know what, what a great way to be introduced to that. It was literally seven dollars look how big this is this thing is huge so really your used bookstore is it's a it's a treasure trove of stuff that you can find and these are the things that i found so that was roald Dahl's omnibus perfect bedtime stories for sleepless nights and i am super excited to get to that so that is sort of my backlist book haul um some older books that you can probably get at your library i got them at my used bookstore um, you can probably find all sorts of places. Um, I hope you guys uh, like them. Let's talk about them if you've read them. If you haven't read them, let's also discuss them, as always. If you are back to my channel, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, well, welcome. Hope you guys liked this video and it inspires some books to make it on your TBR. Don't forget that The Child Finder is out now. And just in case, I'm just going to remind you that Jamie Ford's new novel, Love and Other Constellation, Constellation, Love and Other Constellation Prizes, comes out, I want to say next week, next week. Um, and I raved about that book too. So though, both those books, I've talked about them before they came out, but they're right out now. So um, definitely take a look for The Child Finder by Renee Denfeld, Love and Other Consolation Prizes by Jamie Ford. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend and I'll talk to you soon. Happy reading. Bye.